So Intel may be releasing its new 11th gen processors sooner than we thought, but is it going to be enough to beat the reigning champion? Oh yeah, Ryzen 5000. I don't know. Let's talk about it. Before that, if you're looking for a new CPU, in the description below I'll have an Amazon affiliate link to an Intel i9-10900K CPU that's going for only $400 right now. So yeah, that's $50 less than the 5800X. It's actually in stock. You're getting two more cores and four more threads. So in my opinion, that's a really awesome deal. So if you want to go ahead and get a new CPU that's actually in stock, go ahead and click that link in the description below. And just as a disclaimer, every time you do click one of those links and you purchase something after that, I do get a little bit of a kickback. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into this video. So videocards.com just shared an article that showed two leaked upcoming Intel 11th gen processors that was originally posted over on Billaby, which by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below. And those two processors are the i7-11700K and the i9-11900. And while they do look impressive, what I want to talk about in this video is whether or not they're going to be impressive enough to get gamers to switch over from their Ryzen 5000 CPUs, or if it's just going to be another disappointing upgrade from Intel. Now, in order to answer that question, first we need to take a look at those leak specs. So I'm going to take a look first at the i7-11700K, and according to this leak, it's going to have eight cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz, an all-core boost clock of 4.3 gigahertz, a maximum boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz, a RAM speed that supports up to 3200 megahertz out of the box, a max power draw of 250 watts without any overclocking, and it's going to support PCIe 4. And you know, if you took a look at all that and it seems a bit odd to you, well, it does seem a bit odd to me too, because what you're looking at here is actually a reduction in the maximum turbo clock speed, because if you take a look at the 10700K, you'll notice that it's actually slightly faster. And the reason for this, if you're a little bit out of the loop, is that, you know, these new processors are going to be using a new microarchitecture. And what happens when you make a new microarchitecture is oftentimes they make what is called a wider design. And when you make a wider design, it's just a little bit harder to get higher clock speeds without getting onto a new node. And unfortunately, these new processors are likely going to be on the same 14 nanometer node that Intel's been using for a very, very long time. So it's going to be very difficult for them to get an increase in clock speeds. And in fact, it looks like they're actually going to be reducing their clock speed. So, you know, that's a little bit disappointing, but we might be looking at anywhere between, you know, 10% to 18% IPC improvements here. So overall, these processors should be significantly faster at gaming. But the question still remains, are they going to be fast enough to dethrone Ryzen and by how much? But first, let's go ahead and take a look at that second CPU, the i9-11900. So taking a look at this one, it's very, very similar. It looks like we have the same eight cores, 16 threads, though here's where things get a little bit different. It has a base clock of only 1.8 gigahertz, an all-core boost clock of 4 gigahertz, a maximum boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz, RAM speed of 3200 megahertz will be supported out of the box. It should supposedly have a maximum power draw of 224 watts without any overclocking, which since this isn't a K processor, you probably won't be able to do that anyway. And of course, it will support PCIe 4. So that's very, very good to see here that they're finally supporting PCIe 4. I mean, Ryzen's had that since Ryzen 3000. And you know, if you are a content creator and you do like to move around very large files all the time, PCIe 4 is definitely something that's really great to have, though, you know, when in terms of gaming and in terms of, you know, most day to day usage or even loading different applications, PCIe 4 doesn't really make that much of a difference. So, you know, for the average user, it's not really a big deal, but it's nice to see that they're finally jumping on board because, you know, even the newest graphics cards here coming out from AMD and Nvidia both have PCIe 4 now. So yeah, they did definitely need to get that on their CPUs. But you know, I do have to talk about, is this going to be good enough to dethrone Ryzen? And you know, I think it is going to be because let's say they do end up getting an 18% IPC jump, which is a pretty massive jump though. You know, it's something that's definitely possible with a new microarchitecture. Well, if they do end up getting the 18% IPC jump and we compare the i7-11700K versus the i7-10700K, well, you're looking at, yeah, it's a little bit faster of a clock speed on the 10700K, but you know, it's not that much faster and you're going to be seeing a pretty impressive IPC jump. So you're probably going to be looking at somewhere, you know, close to maybe 15% faster, maybe a little bit less, maybe 12% faster than the i7-10700K in gaming. But you know, if we do compare that to say the Ryzen 5800X, which currently I believe, you know, taking a look at places like hardware and box, it's looking like it's roughly around maybe 7% faster than Intel's best gaming CPU 
CPUs right now, well, then you're looking at, you know, even if it's 15% faster, which kind of to me is a bit of a best case scenario, it might end up only being, say, 7 to 10% better, but let's say it's 15% better, well, then you have to take away that 7%. Well, now we're looking at a scenario where, you know, Intel's only about 8 to 7% faster than AMD. So, you know, it's not very impressive of a jump. And if the price isn't right, it's not going to be good enough, I think, to move a lot of gamers over because, you know, the majority of the mind share in terms of the DIY and enthusiast community is definitely with Ryzen right now. So if Intel wants to get some of that mind share back, they got to give you not only more performance, but they got to give you that more performance at a better price. So let's say that, you know, Intel comes in with the 11700K and, you know, previously they would have charged, say, $400, $450 for it. Well, if they decide to charge, say, $300 or even $350 for this CPU and it does end up beating, you know, Ryzen in terms of not only gaming performance, but also multi-core performance, well, you're looking at a CPU that's going to be kind of a no-brainer for a lot of people. So, you know, they're going to have PCI 4 at this point. I think a lot of people will then, you know, take a look at Intel and go, well, why would I buy a $450 CPU from AMD when I can buy a $300 or $350 CPU from Intel and it actually gives me better performance? So that's definitely a part where Intel could, you know, pull ahead there. You know, and in terms of PCIe, if Intel did decide to come in like they did with their last generation of CPUs and actually give you more PCIe lanes, that's an opportunity for them to get a lot more people on board because there's a lot of people like me who want to put a bunch of different things in their computer, whether that be NVMe, PCIe, SSDs, or you want to put in an audio card. There's a bunch of different things you can do that unfortunately with a mainstream, you know, socketed CPU that's meant for gaming, you're stuck with only 20 lanes of the CPU and four to the chipset. So it'd be nice if Intel did come in and give you some extra chipset lanes there. That's definitely an opportunity. And then the other opportunity, obviously gaming performance. That's a huge scenario for a lot of people when they go to look at a CPU, they're like, what has the absolute best gaming performance? So if they can get something that actually is 15% better or something like that, well, that's definitely an opportunity for Intel to get a lot more gamers back on the Intel platform. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about these upcoming Intel CPUs? Do you think that they'll actually get people to jump from Ryzen back to Intel? Or do you think that there's just way too many people who are stuck on Ryzen at this point and they're not even willing to look at Intel? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.